Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Michelle Edelman. I um, am the program director here at Health Data Compass. Today, I'd like to give you an overview of who we are, what data we have available, um, what services we provide, and how best to partner with us. So to start off with, we are stewards of the data. We don't actually own any of the data that's in our data warehouse. And this actually becomes very important when it comes to some of the compliance steps that are related to getting data from Health Data Compass. Um, in practice, we're informaticists with expertise in healthcare data. We're digging into that healthcare data day in, day out. We've got a lot of experience with that. And then we collaborate very closely with clinicians, statisticians, and the HIPAA privacy officers uh, for, for their expertise in the different areas that we touch. You know, Health Data Compass has, is really a core service, and we have an enterprise data warehouse, which is part of the CU Anschutz Medical Campus. We're part of the Colorado Center for Personalized Medicine. We partner closely with um, four different partners, UC Health, Children's Hospital Colorado, CU Medicine, and CU Anschutz. If you're, one, if you're an employee of one of these four partner institutions, then you're part of our core customer base. What's happened is we've been able to partner with these institutions and get access to pretty much any discrete field within the medical record systems at UC Health and Children's Hospital Colorado. So that's not only the um, hospitals on the Anschutz campus, but North and South clinics as well. And what I mean by a discrete data element is things like diagnoses, uh, medications, procedures, labs, flow sheets, encounter, provider details, all of that information. And we'll go into the limitations in just a little bit. In addition to that medical record data, we also have professional billing codes from CU Medicine. So oftentimes when you go to the hospital, you get two bills. The hospital billing information comes from the actual hospital and then the provider billing can come through CU Medicine. And so we know it was on that provider billing that was done by CU Medicine as well. We know the codes. Additionally, uh, there's data from CU Anschutz that we have available. So the trivia information that you have for the day is that there's actually CU Anschutz patients. Patients that go to the Barbara Davis Center or the Hemophilia Thrombosis Center are actually considered CU Anschutz uh, patients from a compliance perspective, even though that they're renting space off of the children's EPIC instance. So we've got that data. And we also have genomic data from the Colorado Center for Personalized Medicine Biobank participants. You know, the goal of what Compass is trying to do is trying to enable insight into what's happening to the patient, not just what's happening to the patient within a specific hospital system. To that end, we're also going after external data sources. So as of today, we've got date of death and cause of death from the Colorado Death Certificate hosted by CDPAG. And we also have all pair claims data. Um, this is data that um, covers about 70% of the patients that have a clinical relationship with UC Health and Children's Hospital Colorado, and will allow you to see what payer information, what insurance claims were done even outside of those hospital systems. So especially with um, the specialty clinics that we have at these two hospital systems, a lot of people are getting care elsewhere in their hometown um, and, and going to the hospitals for specific reasons. The claims data allows you to see the claims and the healthcare utilization that's happening outside of that system. And that's really dictated by the type of insurance company that that patient has. Um, and again, it covers about 70% of the patients that we have a clinical relationship with, but for those 70%, it's very comprehensive during the time that they have that insurance. The other data that we have is we've been done. We've done some um, geocoding uh, for uh, patient address. So we have latitude, longitude, elevation, uh, census tract data. That census tract data for the patient address can then be linked to the ACS data to get the social determinants variables that are um, gathered through the census. to be transparent on the limitations that we do have with the data. Um, one, it takes time to get the data into our data warehouse. We don't know what's happening in the ED right now. Uh, for the UC Health, CU Medicine Children's data, we have last week's data. This is subject to um, outages or epic upgrades that are happening at the source. So we don't always have last week's data, but typically we have last week's data. Um, and then for the other external data sources, 
those happen at different cadences. Uh, we have the civic data, we get the civic data every six months and the CDPHE data, that death information on a monthly basis. Secondly, we do not have dollar figures. We know what was billed, but we do not know how much they were billed for. That is proprietary and stays with the hospitals. When I describe the data we have, I mentioned discrete data elements. What falls outside of that discrete data elements are things that are scanned in to the, into EPIC. Anything that's scan, a scanned document, uh, we do not have the ability to read that information. The other thing is free text notes. What I mean by free text notes is any time that the provider is writing in paragraph format. So this is progress notes, radiology reports, pathology reports, discharge summaries, all of that really valuable information is considered a free text field. For UC Health, we have that data in our data warehouse, and we are working on natural language processing to try to get um, term extraction out. But with the complexities of the English language, you know, we're, we're not there yet. Um, and we could send, we could give you that bulk of that paragraph, um, but it will require somebody to read through that information. And as you go through your project, you'll need to make sure that you've got the storage ability to store that much data. So we can talk about what makes more sense um, going into the chart or, or getting the, the, the dump of paragraph information. The other thing to mention is that um, is re regarding restricted data. So when you're in hyperspace, sometimes you get that pop-up window that says, you know, are you sure you want to view this data? You know, do you want to break the glass? That information is deemed restricted by the hospital. It's flagged as restricted. Um, and this is really related to things like substance abuse, childhood neglect, uh, mental health, behavioral health type of encounters. Um, for that, if right now that data is typically removed from a standard report, we do, we can get access to that restricted data, but you have to ask for it specifically. If you need that information, if you're studying things that impact mental health, you can come work with us but there'll be some specific things that we need to do to make sure that we are allowed to release that sensitive data to you. And know that if you're not asking for it, then the information that is captured within those sensitive confidential encounters would not be included in your report. The other thing to mention is um, the Children's Research Informatics team is a great team. They were here before Health Data Compass. Uh, they have a lot of expertise um, extracting the data from for children's. If you're only looking to get children's data and you don't need data from UC Health or any of the other uh, data sources that we have, um, that's best served by the Children's Research and Informatics team. If you are interested, if you are looking for children's plus UC Health or ABCD data or something like that, um, then you work with Compass and we actually pull in somebody from the research, uh, Children's Research and Informatics team and we work side by side by that for, uh, with that individual to get that data out to you. Any questions, concerns about the data that we currently have or who we are? Okay. All right, so what we've been able to do is we've been able to get all of the agreements, contracts, all that, the paper castle that it took to acquire all of this data into play. We've uploaded the data into the Google Cloud platform and can leverage the, the computing power of the cloud to, to manage this data. We've linked the, the records together so that we know which children's patient is, belongs with that civic data. We have transformed the data into a common data model called OMA. Um, this is, can be really helpful for multi-institutional studies where you're trying to get the same information from our system as a variety of different institutions. Um, it's an internationally supported common data model. Um, and, and it's one way in which you can actually we use one query to, to ask the same question in a variety of different places. We've also worked on um, harmonizing terminologies. So from the source, there's a lot of information that um, and records that don't have a standard language associated with it. So for example, labs, about 50% of the labs from the source do not have an associated LOINC code, which can make it challenging to speak the same language and make sure that we're getting you what you want. Through our mapping ability, our mapping efforts, We've closed that gap and now um, less than 1% of the labs that we, we have access to um, are not mapped to a link code. Um, other domains are not that way and you'll still see that there's one of the biggest challenges is making sure that you and, and I are speaking the same language. 
um, and we'll walk through what that looks like. And we can, we can go into the details there. Um, and then we populate data mart and we get the data out to you in a variety of different ways. Um, there's a self-service query tool called Trinetics. The majority of what we do is we deliver line level data for your study team to now analyze that raw data. And we deliver that data in a variety of different ways. Um, everything, if it's PHI, it needs to be secure. So we deliver that in REDCap, a secure server on campus, or um, Eureka, which is a virtual machine environment that Compass supports. To give you a sense of what you can do with the data that is available to you through the Health Data Compass Data Warehouse, um, here's some real life examples. So one, you, you really have the ability to collect more comprehensive data than ever before. So one example is a group that was looking at whether air quality influences asthma exasperation. We were able to define asthma through diagnosis codes. We could have also done that through labs or medications. We were able to pull in uh, the medical record data that spoke to confounding variables as well as the outcomes of those out asthma patients. And then we were able to provide the latitude and longitude for that patient address, which they were then able to link to publicly available air quality data to ask that question. The majority of what we do is really looking at trends over time. So we have data from when Epic went live at each of the different hospitals. So there's 12 different hospitals within the UC Health system. The Anschutz Medical Campus uh, went live first in 2011. The other clinics are more recent than that. The children's data is actually earlier than that. It becomes really robust around 2008. Uh, the EPIC modules rolled out in different phases, so there's a little bit of data prior to 2008, but it becomes really robust. What that means is we now have 10 years worth of data um, for patients who have been with us for that long. And we can start to really look at trends over time. So what factors contribute to a certain clinical event like readmissions after spine surgeries? You know, with leveraging that civic data, which is the all pair claims data that allows you to see the billing claims that are happening even outside of the UC Health or Children's Hospital Colorado system, it really provides an opportunity to see what's happening to the patient and potentially uh, to improve patient care. So one example is that there was a group looking at and studying non-epileptic seizure patients. The non-epileptic seizure patients present as if they have epilepsy and so are misdiagnosed and mistreated for some time, even before they come into the UC Health system. And so this group, using that civic data, was able to figure out what was happening, what type of healthcare utilization that patient was ha happening, was receiving before they even um, entered into the UC Health system and looked for opportunities to intervene. Finally, that CDPG data, that death data, you know, the, unfortunately, the EMR data really doesn't have much information about um, that, that final vital of whether somebody is, is currently living or have, has passed. And so by using that CDPHG data, one, you've got that really important outcome as well as can really help you figure out who is truly potentially eligible for contact, whether that's patient study recruitment or any other purpose of contacting the patient. And that can really reduce the burden on the patient family as well as the study team uh, to, to get that more accurate. The other thing is for those patients who are part of the Colorado Center for Personalized Medicine Biobank, um, we can now link all of that phenotypic data to their, their genome and the, the genetic variants. And so, um, so far, you know, the Biobank um, has recruited 185,000 participants. Over about 34,000 of them have been genotyped with 1.8 million variants. I know the target is um, genotyping 500,000 participants uh, that have information associated with the EMR. And you know, this will hopefully really drive the, the field of personalized medicine where, where you can really understand how um, someone's genes can influence um, disease outcome. Um, if you're interested in learning more about the Colorado Center for Personalized Medicine genomic data, um, please go to this website down here. Uh, that's a, a website for the Translational Informatics Services, which is another unit within the Colorado Center for Personalized Medicine. If you're interested in this genomic data, you still come through Compass, and we bring in the appropriate people from uh, the trans Translational Informatics Services to talk to you, and they'll be part of that consultation meeting. I'm going to stop, see if there's any questions. Okay. Feel free to interrupt, by the way. 
So next, um, we'll move into what services we provide and how best to partner with us. So first, let's talk about Trinetics, which is that self-service uh, feasibility tool. So this is something that you can access. You, you sign a data agreement, an uh, online de-identified data agreement, saying you'll treat the data responsibly, and then we'll get you access to Trinetics. And this is a screenshot of what you'll see. You'll go in and you can put your inclusion criteria um, into here. And this is must-have. This is a nice um, user interface where you can search by terms and it brings up um, a variety of different hits throughout the different domains. You can search for things like diagnoses, medications, labs, um, encounters, things like that. And then you put the exclusion criteria in, into the cannot have button. There is some time parameters that you can um, can use to filter as well as some filtering by the demographic information. You then click this button set that says count patients and you get um, information at your fingertips about how many people meet this um, these criteria. This can be really helpful for questions when you've about, you know, hey, I've, I've got this really great idea, but I don't even know if there's enough patients to, to make this study worthwhile. The other thing that Trinetics offers is you can click this explore cohort button and you can get some high level visualizations about those patients that you just identified. There are ways in which you can um, get re-identified data from Trinetics. You work with Compass and we can re-identify those MRNs and provide a little bit of extra uh, patient level information assuming that you've got the proper approvals in place. We can turn that around in less than a one, one week, which is what you'll see is much faster than um, the custom process. If you're interested in accessing uh, Trinetics, go to our website, healthdatacompass.org, and it's this top, but this top section here under the data delivery services tab. And the first thing you'll need to do is sign this uh, data agreement. Make sure to click the Trinetics button. Okay, majority of the time, Trinetics is helpful for those feasibility type questions, but it's not gonna get you the, the line level data that you're wanting. Um, in that situation, that's when um, you'll work with Compass to build a custom data extraction. What that process looks like is first, uh, go to our website, healthdatacompass.org, and on the home page, request a custom data set. This will take you to a red cap survey that gives you some, that gives us some high level information about what you're looking for. Um, we've, we then ask you to come to the orientation and, and do some prep work. We want to make sure that, you're, that, that you and your study team have had an opportunity to talk about all of the details that we're going to need from you so that we can get that data out um, in the appropriate way. And so you can fill, fill out this data request questionnaire. The moment that you know you've got a specific ask and you want to work with Compass, um, there is a queue. And so you want to do that as soon as you can. You do not need IRB approval to fill, fill out this red cap questionnaire. However, if you're needing um, PHI for research, you would need the IRB approval before we connect with you and dedicate a resource to your project. Um, that questionnaire gets you a ticket in line. There's prep work that will help you walk through as you're, you're waiting for your dedicated person to be assigned to you. At that moment, um, we will set up a, a meeting with you and your study team, really digging into the details about what you need for your project and how to get that data out. Um, there's a lot of, of details that go into making sure that we get your specific data from the, the massive data warehouse that we have. Um, we, there, there's usually some follow-up and we want to have you sign off and make sure that this is what you want. We then review those requirements internally, looking for any uh, complications that we might be able to find as a team. We write hundreds of lines of code to build that data for you and then we conduct quality checks. So we go line by line through that code, making sure that there's no bugs. We hire students to take a handful of that draft report and compare it to hyperspace. Hyperspace is our source of truth. We recognize that that's a flawed source of truth, but we're only as good as the data that's being entered in hyperspace. Um, and then there's the logical review, um, which is where we're looking at relationships be between tables and columns uh, to make sure that the report's looking good. The other really important piece here is that compliance step. And this is, this is a double check to make sure that we're not going to get the, date, the institution in trouble by releasing the data that you're requesting. So what that data looks like, what that process looks like is you'll um, read and sign a data agreement um, and fill out a project review or request form um, that gives us some information. And then we go and get that approval on your behalf from the Security and Compliance Committee. 
this is where it becomes really important that we are stewards of the data. We do not own the data. The data is owned by the people where the data comes from, UC Health, Children's, UC Medicine, CU Entry, it's in the genomic data by CCPM. The Security and Compliance Committee is built off of, is composed of security officers, privacy officers, and lawyers from each of the, those four partner institutions and the Comer Director. These are the true experts in security and compliance and are there to make sure that we're not going to get the institution in trouble um, by releasing data. Okay. Um, what this means for you is if you're looking for de-identified data, you sign that uh, online data agreement saying you'll treat the data responsibly and you're pre-approved. If you want PHI for research, you need IRB approval, just like if you got data anywhere else, you'll have that data agreement and a high level project review request form, and we go and get that um, approved on your behalf. If you're needing data for quality improvement or treatment payment operations, you don't actually need IRB approval. Um, it'll still go through the Security and Compliance Committee. They'll confirm that it's truly for quality improvement purposes and will be good to go in general. If there's any questions or concerns, we'll, we'll uh, get that information back to you. And we're always striving to get to the yes, yes, we can get you this data. Uh, once in a great while, it'll require like an IRB amendment if, if your documentation is not lining up with what you actually need. Okay, after that, um, um, needs us to confirm that that data is going to be stored in a secure location. So we'll get that information from you and then we deliver it um, and we will request a, a, a meeting. Um, we want to, once you see the data, we want to meet with you. We wanna be able to make sure that you've got what you need um, and that we're um, able to answer any questions we have about, you know, the, the frequency of, of this field, the pop, how well populated this field is, or whatever questions you have. That's the general process. Any questions so far? Okay. What we just went through is what is the standard custom data extraction um, pipeline. It is underwritten by the four partner institutions, which means there is no additional cost to you. Uh, for this process. Um, this means that we have a lot of demand for our services. We prioritize it by readiness. You know, we're, that's partly why we um, will not dedicate a resource to you in, until you've got IRB approval, if, if that's appropriate for your study. Um, there are other ways in which we support you. We have compass office hours and other things that you can come to during that, um, that waiting time. Time witness. We do our best to meet timeline, to meet your needs about around grants, presentations, or other hard time deadlines. But please come talk to us as soon as you know you're going to need data from Compass. Um, this is not a push of a button. This, there's a lot of work that goes into each data extraction. So please come talk to us so that we can meet your needs. Um, and then simplicity. Um, Hypothesis-driven focused projects are going to be prioritized. Um, uh, faster than, hey, give me everything within the EMR system. And these days we do continue to expedite the COVID-19 work. Give you a sense of what this looks like. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. From the beginning of when we really started this work in July of 2017, we've delivered over 1,400 data sets. About 100 of those have been re-identified through Trinetics. But we consistently have over 100 data requests in the queue. For every project that we get out, that we get out, another one comes in. Um, and so that means that there is significant wait time uh, for an individual project. Uh, so, so please be aware of that. And we're doing, we, we continue to, to look for creative ways to try to reduce this timeline. But I want to be transparent about what this currently is. So for that Trinetics, um, there is no consultation. You don't have a dedicated resource. Um, you know, you can come to office hours. We'll help you if you need it, um, but we can also deliver re-identify those MRNs for the uh, patients that you identified through Trinetics within seven days. The rest of the projects are sized really by an, our best of how much time it's going to take us to build your report. Extra smalls are usually modifications, additions, you know, that aim, that aim three of a project that you've already um, been working on and have data from Compass on. Um, the extra larges are, are really getting towards the scope of, of a registry size project. Um, and so what this looks like is, you know, from the moment that you submit that survey to the time that we'll assign a Compass 
resource to have that consultation with you. You're looking at between eight to eight to 14 weeks, which is why I'm encouraging you to submit that request as soon as you possibly can. Even if you do not yet have IRB approval, that is okay. You can paralyze that process. Um, the goal is that assuming that you've got the prerequisites and, and we've got all of the information that we need um, at that consultation meeting to go and build your report, um, we are targeting delivering that data between two to four weeks once you, um, once you connect with us. We know that um, it would be great to have the data sooner um, and we're doing what we can, but do know that there are ways that you can expedite your project. Um, there are uh, different departments on campus who, give, um, who provide a unit dedicated resource. So they pay the salary of one of our employees and they get to dictate the project priorities for that individual. And they have a dedicated resource that has all of the support of Compass, um, but can, can be assigned what, to whatever priorities they have. And then there's a ad hoc consultation. So we work with Blue Tree, which is a consulting firm. Um, we've worked with them in the past. Um, they do similar work to what we do. They charge us $165 an hour and we'll, we'll we pass that off to you. So there are ways to expedite your work if you need. Know that it does take time still to get this consultant. So um, it's, it's, not, it's still not a snap of the fingers, but we can work with you. Okay, to give you a sense of within this custom core pipeline, what the, the data extraction looks like. What is the data that you see? Uh, what, that, what is that report? Um, we deliver that data in a relational data set. So what that means is for each uh, variable, we're looking for where, where there's a one-to-one -one relationship. So you know, the vast majority of people want some type of demographic information on these patients. So there's usually a demographics table, which is things that are stable at the person level. Um, that includes things like MRN, current five-digit zip code, date of birth, sex, ethnicity. Um, if you're in this situation, um, we'll assume that the, the study team is looking for all outpatient encounters where there's a specific list of medications that were prescribed between a specific time frame. In that situation, that arbitrary person ID is going to link so you know what the demographic information for that patient's and the th things that are stable at that encounter level are going to be in this table too. So that includes things like department name, provider ID, encounter date, the smoking status, weight. Weight can actually be measured multiple times within an encounter, so usually we provide the last, but we'll look for your guidance on if for whatever reason you want the first one. You know, assuming that in this project, they're, they're really interested in the list of comorbidities. Um, so there's a list of diagnoses codes uh, that are chronic, and they don't care. And um, the study team really wants them re regardless of where or when they are recorded in diagnoses that are associated with these table two encounters will have a matching arbitrary encounter ID. They'll also be arbitrary encounter IDs that don't match to table two. Um, we'll provide things like date of diagnosis, the code type, whether that's nine and 10, the actual code, the actual description, and the provenance. The provenance is things like, okay, did you want that encounter di that diagnosis from encounter diagnosis, billing di diagnosis, um, problemless patient medical history, depending on what you're looking for and the uh, question you're asking, you may want some of those or all of them, and it may influence um, how you treat it. So we're gonna provide that information to you. Um, you know, there would be a medication table. We've got this list of medications, um, medications that were prescribed during the specific encounters. We're going to give you things like separate lab table, flow sheet lab table, et cetera. Any questions about what to expect from uh, the relational data set that Compass typically provides? Okay. Because the, the compliance hurdle is, is different for a data, data uh, let me show you what the data would look like if you got, a, if you requested de-identified data. You wouldn't be allowed to have that MRN. We do, as an honest broker, we always hold that. So if you needed to, you could go back and re-identify, you could work with us after you got the appropriate compliance steps to re-identify that. So it's not, it's something that you could ask for in the future. Um, we would provide, we could provide a three digit zip code uh, masking where populations are less than 20,000. And instead of date of birth, we would give you the age of a specific event of birth to the, that date of interest. And so that temporal relationship stays the same across the tables. 
uh, but you don't know what month or year, specific year that happened. Okay, the other thing that's important to know is um, about that, about storing data. So if it's de-identified, we'll deliver, we typically deliver that data through a CSV file and, and we don't ask any questions. However, if it's PHI or limited data set, we do need to make sure that that, P, that sensitive data is going to be stored in a secure location. Um, you know, REDCap is an option. Uh, there's the campus secure servers. Those are reviewed by the security officers as long as the security officers say it's okay. It's good with Compass. And then Eureka. Um, Eureka is a compliant and secure virtual machine on the Google Cloud platform. We basically have um, pulled out the, the, the knowledge that we've done to keep our, the data warehouse secure in the cloud and been able to apply it to a specific project. And that allows you to have your own environment where you can do analyses. The good things about Eureka include the fact that it's scalable. You can pick as big of a machine or as simple of a computer as you want for your computing needs. And you only pay for the moments that you're, you're using it. It's, by, it's charged by the minute. Um, I know I'm running out of time, so I just wanted to mention that there's additional information about Eureka on our website. Okay, so in summary, you know, Health Data Compass are, you know, are, is made up of informaticists and we are stewards of the data. We have data from our four partner institutions as well as external data sources. Um, and we provide self-service cohort discovery, the custom data extraction, and some computing power solutions. Um, just wanna give you our website one more time, healthdatacompass.org. Uh, the most important tabs for you are the homepage as well as the data delivery services. We do have Compass office hours, so you can always come to us um, and, and reach out and, and have a, a personal conversation even before you're assigned a dedicated resource for your project. And, and that's it. Is there any questions before I hand it over?